Hey guys welcome back to the channel. One Piece Chapter 1097 is out, and this chapter has revealed Dragon Past and it's continuing the backstory of Kuma. So we are again continuing with another reader request, cover page. And on this cover page we have our hero Kuma, Ginny and his two friends. Kuma is catching salmon with the power of his devil fruit ability, while other three are cheering him. In the last chapter we saw Kid Kuma and his friends successfully manage to escape from God Valley to Sorbet Kingdom, and they were so happy that they cried tears of joy because they now had enough food, and could enjoy a simple, peaceful life. Moving little bit of flash forward, 8 years after the God Valley incident. Kuma is now 17 years old and has established himself in the Sorbet Kingdom, where he has become a respected local pastor. People admire him for his special skill of healing. Every Sunday, sick and elderly individuals come to Kuma's church, and he uses his ability to help them feel better and free them from their suffering. People has fondly started referring to Kuma's ability as the Miracle Hand, refereeing to last chapter where Ivankov called his hand as Hand of Liberation. On the other hand, we see that Ginny has also grown up and is now a beautiful young woman at the age of 21. Ginny stops Kuma from doing this work because she cares about Kuma. Ginny prevents Kuma from doing this work because Kuma has the ability to remove pain from people's bodies. But eventually, Kuma has to endure that pain. Kuma has to do this because if the pain bubble is left alone, it goes back to the original user. So, Kuma endures that pain every week. It's like what Zoro did for Luffy. But there's a big difference between Zoro and Kuma. Zoro is a regular human, while Kuma belongs to the powerful buccaneer tribe. However, no matter what, enduring that amount of pain every week is not easy, and Kuma's condition gets pretty bad after enduring it. So, Kuma leave that nothing happened moment every week. But our Kuma is one of those people who are happy to see others happy, and he doesn't worry about himself at all. But someone does worry about Kuma, and that's Ginny. But Ginny can't stop Kuma from doing this. Ginny is sad because all the people who come to get rid of their pain don't even know how much pain Kuma goes through for them. That is why she get quite mad, because elderly people keep coming to seek help in getting rid of their pains. Ginny tells those people that it's not a free hospital where they can come without paying. People say that Ginny is beautiful, but her language is harsh. It's not the fault of those people because they don't even know what Kuma does for them. They want to give something to Kuma, but they are all poor, so they can't give anything to Kuma. An elderly person began discussing about the new leader of the Sorbet Kingdom. According to the people King Bikori is cold-hearted and a monster. He even ordered that elderly and sick folks like them must pay a very strict tribute, without any exceptions. One of the elderly person mentioned that if they don't pay, they might be put in prison. An old lady shared a story about her acquaintance who was put in prison and ended up dying because of starvation. The king doesn't even give food to his prisoners. He is more of a cheapskate than Ginny. King is a terrible man, who would do anything to please the celestial dragons. And if we couldn't stay in good health we're gonna get killed. King Bikori is secretly listening to their conversation through a wiretap, and then when he hears their opinion, he doesn't get angry, but instead, he was blushing. We are then fast forward 5 year. By now Kuma is now 22 year and Ginny 26. Ginny proposed Kuma for marriage, but Kuma told her with some hesitation that they couldn't do it. This made Ginny angry because she didn't see any reason. She knew that he loved her and told him to just admit it. She angrily asked him if it wouldn't make him happy. Kuma, blushing, admitted that it would, but it was complicated. The reason behind Kuma's hesitation was that his parents were enslaved because of his buccaneer blood. Even though Kuma's mother was a normal human, she also suffered because of it. So, Kuma didn't want Ginny to go through the same fate as his mother. So, Kuma didn't want to make her unhappy and any child of theirs would be in serious danger. To switch topics, Kuma picked up a newspaper and talked about a new article discussing about freedom fighter, who were causing riots in different countries and had been issued wanted posters, and their leader's name was Dragon. Kuma felt inspired and spoke about how cool and heroic Dragon is. Kuma was certain that one day he too would make it out to sea and spend the rest of his life helping the people. Right at that moment, someone knocked on the door, and it was his friend who had a crush on Ginny. They even caught a lot of fish to give to her. Kuma didn't mind, so he thanked his friend for bringing the fish. However, this made Ginny very mad, and she threw a wooden container at Kuma's head and called him a fool. Three years later, Kuma is now 25 years old. He got involved in a big incident where he got really mad and asked a group of men to release all the people they had kidnapped. Some elderly people who were nearby begged Kuma to help them. The soldiers made fun of him and asked if he really wanted to go against the royal army. Some people in the crowd recognized Kuma as a pastor from the South Church. One soldier with a scar on his face, holding an old man, asked Kuma if he hadn't heard about the new law. He said they were now allowed to use people from the South however they wanted. 
Kuma realized that they planned to enslave them. Kuma's fury only grew higher, and then using his devil fruit power, he launched his signature move Ursa Shock, sending a clear message of rebellion and resistance. Somewhere else, King Bikori's followers advised him to think again about such a harsh policy because the people would hardly accept. But the king insisted they shouldn't worry because people might find it hard to accept the changes. But soon enough, they'd all begin to look down on the southern people, just like he did. He explained the new law, saying that the Sorbet Kingdom would be split into two parts. The northern part would be the real Sorbet Kingdom, where people would pay a heavenly tribute to the world government. They calculated the tribute based on the country's population, so the elderly in the southern part were seen as a problem. By cutting them off and making the southern area lawless, the real Sorbet Kingdom could thrive and prosper. In the next panel, we see Kuma and others are all locked up in prison. Kuma asked his friends why they were also arrested. Ginny told him that they got into some trouble too and demanded Kuma's release, but they were punished in the end. Kuma angrily told Ginny that their homeland was turning into a place filled with prejudice and hate. Ginny explained that the king was just a puppet controlled by powerful celestial dragons, and he got his policy from them. That's why if they wanted to oppose this country, they would need to be ready to fight the world government. Meanwhile, in the Sorbet Kingdom, there were several big explosions. King was urged to escape quickly, but he was so disgusted with the idea of being a servant to the celestial dragons that he refused to run away. The people were overjoyed after the tyrant king had been dethroned, and the policy of enslaving people was ended. All of this happened thanks to the actions of a certain group, and the Sorbet Kingdom was saved from its wicked leader. In the next part of the story, we see the leader of the rebellion, Dragon, giving praise to the man recommended by his comrade for causing a big commotion. Ivankov insisted that Dragon would really like this person. Ivankov called out Kuma and Ginny, telling them that they had both been arrested and that they had come to rescue them. Kuma and Ginny were surprised to see Ivankov again. In response, Ivankov said that if Kuma hadn't changed, he should join their group and help change the world with them. Kuma and Ginny ended up joining the Freedom Fighters. The narrator makes it clear that these three people are connected to significant events such as the start of the pirate era and the tragic Ohara incident. Dragon, Ivankov and Kuma became its three great pillars. Over time, the group became famous worldwide as the Revolutionary Army. Even though their movement was getting bigger, they didn't have enough funds. So, they had to work like hired soldiers. They helped different uprisings to remove cruel kings and encourage the spirit of rebellion. They also teach people who wanted to join them how to use weapons and fight. Dragon wanted them to become a huge army that spread all over the world. In the next panel we see that Dragon and others are sailing on the ship. Kuma asked Dragon where he learned about weapons. Dragon said he spent time with the navy, but he didn't find any justice there. So, this confirms that Dragon was once in the navy, and it will put an end to a theory which is going in one piece community for a long. So, we can assume that Dragon at that time was at least at the level of admirals. Ivankov laughed and started talking that from marine to revolutionary all. Dragon wanted to do was helping other. After hearing Ivankov words, Kuma insisted that he will follow Dragon to the very end. To which Dragon replied that he wouldn't end it up regretting. In the next scene with that eight years have spast, we see that Kuma returned to his church in the Sorbet Kingdom. The old people seem overjoyed. Kuma told them that he'd be coming home every now and since he tends to worry about them. Fourteen years ago, in a specific kingdom, a member of the Revolutionary Army noticed that Ginny, who is now the captain of the Eastern Army, was very excited. Ginny explained that the reason for her excitement was quite clear. She happily blushed as she talked about meeting up with Kuma's squad soon, and she was so joyful that she could hardly catch her breath. Someone in the group realized that Commander Kuma was a lucky man because he had won the heart of the women they all admired. However, the thought of everyone admiring Kuma grossed Ginny out. Now scene shifted to main headquarter revolutionary army at Baltigo. Dragon received an urgent call, and his face showed he was very worried. He got news that Ginny had been captured. With this chapter ends. So, with this I end this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If do so then don't forget to give video a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe.